Today we're going to talk about rotating meshes on the GPU and why not to rotate them on the CPU. They're the most expensive thing in the world. Don't do it. It sucks. So as you can see here, I have a static mesh and I also have a HISM, a hierarchical instance static mesh, uh, rotating here all within the view. One's being done on the CPU, one's being done on the GPU, and uh, you want to opt for the one on the GPU if you can in every case because it's just it's a lot better uh, that way. Uh, and I'm going to explain why and also show you how I've done that. So let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Peter L. Newton and thank you for joining me today to watch this video. Let's get rotating. So I'm going to escape from this and I'm going to show you how this is working. So I have this hierarchical instance static mesh here as you can see. I'm out of play, but it's still rotating, and you can see the other instances are rotating, and that's because this particular instance on the GPU has uh, this special material, and this material actually is doing a world position offset and rotating the vertices on the GPU versus rotating the vertices on the CPU and then communicating that to the GPU, which is a lot more expensive, as you can imagine. I just had to explain it in an additional step, which is what happens and which is why it's more expensive. So if I were to click this hierarchical instance static mesh and then double click into the rotate end material, you can see here I'm dividing the time by 25, which I believe it should do a full rotation in a second, but that doesn't matter. Just do whatever math you need and then uh, rotate the amount here, uh, zero to one is a full second, I believe. And then uh, you can see I have this uh, rotate about world axis. So I took the Z because I want to rotate that just in the Z and I pipe that into the material. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward, not complicated. Um, yeah, and that's it. So what you want to do uh, on the, uh, the reason why this is important is because if you do it on the CPU, it has to update, it has to first one, do the math, two, it has to update the CPU uh, in information, and then all that information updates relative information to that particular object, so that means navigation, uh, physics, uh, if you do any sound stuff, I don't know what that would do, but you can, you can imagine there's other things that might need to know how this is rotated, and that's just really expensive. And then, once that's all done, it has to tell the render thread, hey, this, this mesh that we have is actually in a new position, and then it tells the GPU, hey, draw it in that position. Versus the GPU already having that information and the CPU never knowing it happened. And so that's the huge performance boost here, uh, and that's why you want to uh, do that work on the GPU. Now I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this, or at least the way that's least efficient. So if you go to the level blueprint by clicking this up here, click open level blueprint, you can see I've uh, done the work already because it's not a guide on how to do it, it's more of a guide on how not to do this in general, and you can download this project and see how I did it here. So I won't explain this, but basically uh, I get the reference to that one that I have to uh, set, that I have set here on GPU, has a tag on it that says no rotate, and I'm gonna get that component, get the count of instances, and then I'm gonna rotate and compose a new rotation on it, update the instances, and you know, uh, basically it's done as efficient as possible, but it still sucks. So, uh, you know, don't do this if you, can, if you can prevent it. And so I'm going to show you why it sucks and not just tell you how much it sucks. And I'm going to do that by going to uh, Window, Developer Tools, Session Front End, and we're going to open that profile uh, I showed earlier in that image. Uh, if you're watching online or on my Twitter, so I'm going to click Load Profile Data, and I'm going to go to uh, the Perf Project, which has all of the Perf data uh, related to this topic inside the profile data folder and you can see rotate on GPU study. Now if you open this uh, you can see that I have 
Uh, basically, you know, there's a little recording done already. I'm going to click in one spot just so it doesn't average and then get a single frame of information related to this. And uh, as you know, we have the static mesh and the hisms, and we have them both either rotated by the GPU or CPU, and we're going to track the cost of doing all of this work uh, you know, on the GPU and CPU. And uh, I can also do the additional work of opening up render doc really quick, and we can go to that next. Um, but let's go back to the session front end, and let's track the cost strictly on the CPU. So we're going to start in the game thread, expand the hot, and, you know, installing, don't worry about that. Um, need to go to frame time, expand hot again, damn it. Uh, expand, uh, just click here, frame time, frame time again, because that's cool. Thanks, Unreal. Uh, expand hot on pre physics. And then now you can see, uh, I'm going to close this little window here because this is too much information. Uh, but now you can see here, I'm actually rotating, uh, I'm doing add actor road rotation, and that's for uh, this mesh here, right? Because it's all by itself, it's just normal long cube, and uh, I'm not rotating it in the material. You know, it says static mesh, no rotate and mat. So you know, this particular mesh is not being rotated using the material. And if I go back to session front end, I, I don't think it's going to show any information related to that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, where you going? There we go. We got that. So you can see there's a cube, and that's just uh, the name of the actor. And so you can see this actor with the static mesh component is being updated. It's doing all this navigation stuff. And you can disable this. You can, like, oh, like, don't affect navigation. Don't update, uh, don't do overlaps. In it. And you can save on the game thread. But that's not entirely the point. The point is it still has to hit this and if it does the math then that's really where you get hit to. So you can see all this math down here. All this math is related to calculating the new rotation for this because you have to either do add or you just have to multiply the delta which still does some math. So rotating on uh, rotating the static mesh on the CPU Socks, don't do that. And then additionally, the hierarchical instance static mesh, you have to update the instance transform. And you can see it's done three times for each instance that exists. Now you can do checks like, oh, like, is, is it visible or whatever? But still, it sucks. Like, you, get, you gotta go here, uh, update it, pass it some information, and then it updates the body state and, or whatever, body scale. And it's still doing all this math, so like this sucks. You can see it's like it does this seven times, subtracting an int, all this fun stuff. Don't this sucks, right? And this is just on the game thread. Now, what you don't see here is the GPU stuff work because the, the CPU never sees uh, this updating or this updating. And you can confirm this by going to uh, the HISM and then going to the instances. And you can see the transforms are never being updated. Equally, if I click this static mesh here and I go to the rotations, none of this information is being updated. But clearly, you can see they're being rotated. So what's happening there is, on, is in the material. Huge savings, right? So if we go back to the session uh, front end, now let's go and see how updating on the CPU, either a HISM or a static, uh, yeah, either a HISM or static mesh, sucks so we just went through the game thread now let's go to the render thread and see why it also still sucks even worse now with the hisms the only hit you're gonna get uh even though technically you do get hit by the uh uh what's about static meshes in the draw call it's not as bad i guess sort of whatever but you can just at least see like oh this hism or the two hisms that are there they're being called uh, and then knit views and it's like hey go get go get that data for the mesh uh, for the meshes and this is it collecting uh, the information it needs to send to the GPU right and uh, technically it does this too for the static meshes but you won't really you won't really notice this notice that in here um, but the the biggest culprit or like the biggest challenge to avoid 
when using a static mesh and updating it on the CPU is the fact that it hits this uh, other function, which is called update transform command, which is basically saying, hey, uh, um, what's this called? It's going to update the uniform buffer for that uh, static mesh, no rot, right? It's going to say, hey, uh, GPU, you need to like rotate this mesh for us, right? So like, why would you go through all that effort to update a static mesh, update it on the CPU in the game thread, then to just take that information that you put in the game thread and then go in the render thread and say, hey, we got this new information, GPU update it, right? Like, like if you don't necessarily need to update the navigation or update uh, anything related to the CPU that needs that kind of uh, information, this whole process of going between the game thread and render thread is absolutely moot, right? There's no point in doing that. It sucks. Don't do that. So, uh, and one thing you, you don't notice is you don't see the hism, uh, or you don't see the, the static mesh on the GPU at all, uh, necessarily. Like, it's in there, but you don't really see it. There's no, like, extra cost necessarily. It's still, it's still a draw call, of course, but that's about it, right? That's all we care about. Like, it just, of course, we want the draw, but that's the only cost we want to occur. And so, that's the work that's done on the CPU, and that's really the hit. Now you're like, wait. I just added instructions to this material. Oh my god! Now my like my fragmentation count is going to go through the roof. My uh, well not fragmentation, I guess, right? Because this is a vertex. So my vertex shader count is going to go through the roof. Oh my god! Like the cost is going to will be enormous or something. No, it's super cheap. So let me show you in render doc. I'm going to go op open up render doc, open a capture for uh, rotate on GPU study, right, and then open at. And we're going to look at the actual cost for uh, rendering those four meshes there that we saw on the scene. If I go into the base pass, you can see we have the no rotate instance. And let me click the texture view so you can really see what's going on. Uh, you can see it draws uh, no rotate in mat ism, and it draws the static mesh, no rotate in mat static no rot so you know like these are the ones on the cpu they're being drawn first and then it goes to the gpu one it says static mesh rotating mat static mesh rot so you know this is the one rotating same thing here rotating mat his and rot so you know it's rotating on the gpu and uh yeah you can see like if i hit this little little clock here you can see the the performance of these four draws is basically the same so yeah, it's really cheap to do this. And I, I tested this on an Oculus Quest as well, and it's really, 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 really cheap. And it's basically, you can't tell the difference. I mean, uh, I would like to see a difference, but I highly doubt you see a difference because it's, it's really cheap. Um, so yeah, it's basically like free rotational uh, geometry. And yeah, no no side effects as far as I know. If there's side effects, you let me know. But otherwise, rotating on the CPU sucks and don't do it. And thanks for watching.